Do you want louder mixes? Do you want louder songs? And have you tried plugins that make your songs louder but ruin them in the process? I'm reviewing a plugin processor called Gold Clip from Schwabe Digital, which aims to make your songs and mixes louder while still maintaining the sweetness of your song. Let's go. Hey friend, before thinking about getting a loud mix and master and get your song out there punching and live and alive, <laughs> you gotta know the basics of mixing and that you'll get in my mixing guide. It's free. The link is in the description or go to subfighting.com slash mixing and you will get my fundamental workflow that I use every time I mix a song and 15 cheat codes to a better mix. So why do you want your songs to be loud in the first place? And this goes for all music, not only EDM and hip hop and rock. It also goes for jazz and classical music as well. And although you don't want to squeeze those transients and you want your music to be dynamic and open sounding, you still need that loudness when you are featured, for example, in playlists or in compilations or when people listen on YouTube, you switch from one YouTube video to the next and then all of a sudden your song sounds a lot quieter and weaker that's not a good thing so you want your songs to be loud but loud is subjective and it has to do with genre so you just need to have the loudness that is expected in your genre and if you're curious about how the gold clip plugin makes your song sounds louder without them sounding worse stay tuned because in a couple of moments i'll break down the nitty-gritty of that plugin and before we go on just a quick disclaimer i'm in no way shape or form sponsored by this video i'm displaying my subjective opinion only and i'm not influenced by anything else. However, you can find a link to the free trial version of this plugin in the description below and it might just might be an affiliate link, which means that I get a small commission if you click on it and then buy it. So what does loud even mean? And I said that loudness is subjective and it's according to genre, but to find out what is loud and what is quiet, we use some metering. And the first type of meter that you meet when you're making music is the peak meter or the true peak meter. And it's those levels that you don't want to go into the red because then you will get digital clipping and all these nasty artifacts. But when you're measuring loudness, traditionally you've used something called RMS, root mean square, which basically measures the loudness over time and sort of calculates an average measure. That's the RMS. And then more recently we have something called LUFS, which basically does the same, but on a meter, the RMS and the LUFS usually are the same, but there are slight differences and LUFS are more accurate when it comes to perceived loudness. And this gold clip plugin that I'm going to dive deeper into later in this video has LUFS readings as well, both on the input and the output, as you will see later. And just to show you how important LUFS is when it comes to measuring loudness, listen to this. Do you think that's loud? How about this? Okay, it's the same loudness. I think that you would agree with me if I said that the second sound was louder, even though they had the same peak level, we perceive them as louder because it's the same loud sound over time. And that's basically what we want to achieve when we want to turn our songs up to become louder without them being nastier sounding. So how do you get louder songs? Well, the first thing you do is to turn up the level. You want to have the volume as high up as possible. The second thing you do, of course, is to consider the composition of the song. So we need to consider the complete human hearing range. So all the way from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. We need to have something going on. It's not a hard and fast rule, but if you want your song to be as loud as possible, you should consider filling out the frequency spectrum with sounds, with instruments, with vocals and so on. Remember the bass, remember the air bands and everything in between. And then when you have turned everything up as loud as possible, the composition is as good as possible. You can compress this together, reduce the peaks, glue it together and then turn it up even more because when you compress something, you can turn it up in volume and it becomes louder. You can perceive it as louder. Hence my example just before that when you hear something over time that is loud, it's perceived as louder. This is achieved using compressors and limiters. And then you have saturators, which basically adds harmonics. So look at this, for example. So you see this is a regular sine wave and when you add some harmonic distortion you see that there's audio information up 
in the frequencies spectrum. And this is added sound and makes for more a more dense mix. For a whole song, for example, you can use saturation gently to improve the loudness of the song without it sounding nastier. And the final thing is clipping, and that's the theme of this video. So when you clip a signal, when you clip a song, you basically just shave off the top transients of a song without them sounding flatter as they would when you compress them. And Gold Clip actually does a combination of compression saturation and clipping which i will show you real soon in fact i'll prove it to you by showing you some audio examples and how the gold clip works in real life so stay tuned for that okay so what is this amazing tool gold clip seeks to replicate high end mastering converters and the effect they have on the audio signal when you clip the converters gold clip is a mastering grade processor that has three basic functions it's a clipper and it has something called the gold and something that's called the alchemy and as a reminder a link to the free trial version is down in the description below download it install it on your system and give it a go yourself the clipping section consists of a box tone setting, which you can turn on and off. It can be flat and there's also two settings that is slightly different. And what it basically does is that it shaves off some of the extreme highs. And then you have a clipping type, which consists of a modern, a classic and a hard. And those are quite different characteristics of clipping. And you can listen to the differences by hitting the delta switch over here. And when you hit that switch, you basically hear what the processor is doing to your signal. And also on the clipper section, you have a control for the ceiling. That is, if you insert a signal, for example, if it's a drum bus or a track in your mix you want to lower that ceiling so that you can get some clipping going on because the plugin is mainly designed for mastering purposes where you already have some loud signal coming in so it prefers signals approaching zero dbfs another neat function with this processor is that it has a unity button right here which when you hit the unity switch you won't hear the changes in volume you only hear the changes in characteristics you have the same function in ozone isotope where you can hit a switch and you don't hear the added loudness and then you have the gold section which is the crown jewel of this plugin and this is actually a combination of a compressor and a saturator this gold knob increases the level of the signal without affecting the transients or the punch of the song it compresses but it's not an attack and release based compression it's a sample by sample type compression and samples are micro parts of the song it's not like you don't think in terms of seconds in, but you, you think in terms of samples and those are really small <laughs> increments whenever there comes a sample that is loud in volume it will leave it unaffected and when there's a low level sample it will turn it up in volume so it's basically an upward compressor where everything that is quiet in the song will get a bit of a boost and what is already loud will be left alone and uh, you can see here on this graph that this is actually a non-linear process so uh, when you reach the peak level it will turn down the processing and eventually go down to zero as you see and there's there are two modes the classic and the modern the modern is more subtle with only 2.5 decibels of increased gain while the classic is more brutal and can punish the track a bit more with six decibels of gain down in the left corner you can see a readout of how many decibels of clipping has happened since you hit play which is a neat metering function in the plugin and then finally you have the alchemy function and this is basically an attenuator that it takes away a bit of the signal in the highs and the, maybe in the high mids when you are doing a bit of clipping you also introduce some saturation effects and those harmonics are being reduced in the, just the right places using this knob here. And it only does one decibel of reduction. And uh, this is to just smooth things out and make it more pleasant for the ear, the added effects that you have done with the clipping and the gold. So this is just uh, a way to rein in 
the processing that you've already done previously in the plugin. And then you have a lot of other additional functions, which is, for example, the delta switch, as I mentioned. I also mentioned the metering on the down left side, where you can see how much clipping has been applied. And you have a wet dry knob that can be unlinked, so you can blend in as much dry and wet signal as you want, giving you the opportunity to do more clipping or more saturation or drawing of the signal, and then just blend in the dry signal again. So this is a really versatile plugin in that sense. And also when it comes to the input and the output level, you can also unlink them so that when you apply some clipping, you can always unlink the in and out and you can raise the volume a bit up if you need to compensate for the loss in volume. If you hit the question mark button, you will get a description of what every parameter does in the plugin and if you hit the settings button you will get a pop-up window where you can choose linear phase mode or minimum phase mode and the oversampling settings so depending on how much of a fine schmecker you are you can go from 4x oversampling and all the way up to 16x oversampling and if you want to hear my humble verdict of this plugin and compare it to your own verdict as you have tried it or experienced it already keep watching and if you haven't tried this plugin yet, download it. The link is in the description. Here comes some proof that the gold clip from Schwabe Digital actually makes your song louder without destroying it. And if I've given you the impression that this plugin is a godsend for producers and mix engineers or mastering engineers, you're half right. In fact, there are some drawbacks of this plugin as well, which I will discuss in the verdict coming soon. So keep watching to see if you agree with me or not. First, I've processed a 250 hertz sine wave just to give you a demonstration of what the plugin does and what the different parameters does to the sound. Next, I've applied it to the drum bus, and here I compare it with another clipper, and I AB between those two. And finally, I use it on the mix bus right before the last limiter in the chain. And also here, I've compared it to a more simple clipper. Okay, now comes the verdict. And as I said before, this is not a sponsored video and no one feeds money into my opinions. 
and let me know in the comments below whether or not you agree with my thoughts on this plugin. So first off, this plugin blew my mind. Initially, the learning curve was a bit steep, but when I understood the different functions, it became a lot easier and more intuitive. And what I really liked about this plugin is that not only does it make the source material louder, but it preserves the detail and the transparency. It really it just lifts the song without causing much damage. If you overdo it though, you will get some artifacts and then you can determine whether or not you like those artifacts and whether or not it's on a bus or the master or a single track. It really depends. So. This is a versatile plugin. You can use it for both mixing and mastering, and you can also use it as a creative tool to sh really shape sounds. Because for example, when you overdo it a bit, you create a lot of punch and glue. And if you do it more, you just kill it. <laughs> but it's, it's really uh, up to you how you use the tool. And it has all those modern functions that you want. It has oversampling. It has the wet dry knob, which is unlinkable. And you have unlinkable inputs and outputs. You have really good metering. And the GUI is really pretty. It looks professional. Everything is laid out very simply and nicely. And it's easy to navigate in the plugin. The only thing that's a bit fiddly is the low pass filter on the clipper type selector. Even though it's a bit shallow to mention I like the black and gold color scheme it, it sort of resembles a bit the bliss from Kush which I really like so when it comes to the color scheme at least on the other hand the plugin is really expensive when you compare feature set for example you can get the ozone standard for not much more or less than that you can get the fab filter pro l maybe bundled together with the pro q3 and the comp and the other compressor it depends when you buy it if there are sales and so on fab filter often have a 20 or 25 percent off in periods uh, isotope have deals every now and then and then of course you have other alternatives such as the oxford inflator comes to mind it does at least some of the same things and other popular clipper tools such as the classic clipper standard clip cast rog even the decapitator from sound toys can give you a lot of increased loudness without it sounding nasty <clears throat> And also the Fab Filter Pro L2 can also be used as a clipper if you do some tweaking. I think many plugin companies have joined the race to the bottom when it comes to prices and the value also decreases. Even though the plugins are high quality, the perceived value goes down. And when a plugin company such as yeah, Schwabe Digital for one, Fab Filter is another one, they just keep their prices where they should be. I think they do a service to the community by keeping their prices premium. And another thing, and I slightly mentioned this before, it's a steep learning curve. And if you're a beginner, you really would need to watch a couple of videos. You might need to read the manual just to learn what the parameters do and then dive into the plugin and grow with it because there are subtle changes that are made, especially the box tone knob, the low pass filter on the clip type and the alchemy knob. When you tweak those parameters, there are only slight, slight, slight changes to the sound and that can be a bit frustrating. Those slight tweaks might be difficult to hear. And that's a thing that I would want in a future update is that the alchemy knob could go a lot longer. It could go up to 6 dB or maybe even 10 dB just to hear on the extreme how it affects the signal. And I think the delta switch is a bit confusing. It could be clear what it actually does. Yes, it flips the face as I've understood and it lets me hear what is going on with the processing. I would like a function that you have in the isotope RX bundle where you can hit a switch and then you hear only what is taken away from the signal. I like that function. And finally, for a future update, I would like the tone box, for example, to have a tweak section as you have in the Sound Toys plugins. Many of the Sound Toys plugins have a dedicated tweak section so that you can just open up a whole new panel of parameters where you can tweak a little or a lot based on that parameter. But all things considered, if you're dedicated to producing, mixing and mastering your own music, or if you're a pro who mixes and masters 
capacitors for other people, I would strongly consider giving this plugin a spin. It's a nice plugin. It does what it says. And I think it do so in an elegant way. And if you're interested in taking your mixing skills or mastering skills to the next level, check out one of these two videos where I give some tips and tricks on how to mix and master your songs and making them sound better. I salute you for watching and I hope I see you in another video. Peace!